Portland's historic The Black Lady Theater is now taking bookings. Host your next birthday party, concert, networking event, baby or bridal shower, wedding, art show, gala, corporate event, live stage play, audition, and so much more at the one and only The Black Lady Theater. Mention code GODCAST for 15% off your rental fee. Code good for the first time customers only. Valid for a limited time. Call 718-771-0900 to book your event today. Peace. Today is Wednesday, June 19th. Make it today's math. Knowledge born or being born to knowledge cipher or being born to knowledge. That's right. Make your knowledge born. Bring that knowledge into other ciphers, other places that you go and manifest more knowledge because knowledge begets itself. Peace. Back, you know what I mean? God cast. We got team, you know what I mean? What up, y'all? Yeah. Motherfucking live studio audience in this bitch. Keep getting bigger as we go along. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Everybody's feeling good. Shout out to my man, Poison Pen in the motherfucking house. Yeah. He let me hold his lighter down for the show. Told him I'm not gonna put it in my motherfucking pocket. I know. We just saw be... each other at the at the PH tribute show. I was just talking about in the right. last segment. So. Them lighters Word. be serious though. You know them lighter thieves. That's like a serious thing. I, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty too. I'm guilty. I get home from an event every time. I have about five, six lights. And the thing is, I don't even tuck them. They'll just be in my hand the whole time. Right. And then all of a sudden, you accidentally. It's in your pocket. I'll, so now, I'll keep an eye on me, y'all. Look, and they give it to keep me. an eye. The, the light is right here, y'all. Okay? I'm not going to sit it up, but I'm going I'm to keep it right here. But if you see me use it, and then you be like, that's the moment he put it in his pocket. Like, you know what I mean? Like, y'all going to catch Yo, me. Yo, I'm, I'm so nice with it. I done gave people they light it back to light their cigarette, and they'll give it back to me. Like, it's mine. I <laughs> like, also hey. want to give a shout out to your brother, Troy, for hey. his born day. Happy born day, Troy. Happy birthday. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Imagine if I never met the broski. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So... Something that a lot of people have been talking about lately uh, that we both got a chance to see because a lot of times it's like you saw something but I didn't see it and then I seen it but you didn't see it. But we both saw this. Oh yeah, locked and, and a lot of people saw it. So let's get into it. Eva DuBernay, is that, her, is that how you Ava. pronounce it? Eva DuBernay. DuBernay, yep. DuBernay. The queen! When they see us on Netflix, let's clap it up. Excellent. Before we even talk about the story and all of that type of stuff, just on a surface level of a piece of work as far as directing, acting, Cinematography, writing, casting, writing. A plus it across was the board. Excellent. If this shit don't fucking win awards, somebody needs to fucking see a head doctor because this shit was crazy. Yo, I, I cried. I was boo can I, can I cried too. Okay, um, men in the, in the audience. Tell the truth. Please. How many men in the audience cried? Put your hands up. 
Like, fuck that. He said, I should have tear. It, you know, right. even even a single tear will do. Just like, yeah. That, Listen, that shit had me like. That was an emotional story. Especially the Corey, Corey Wise po- story. Bro, you know, I had to stop it. I had to like walk away. Kevin Richardson, Antoine McCray. And Tron, that's right, and because they were calling him Tron. And Tron McRae, um, Raymond Santana, mm-hmm. um, Yusuf Ali, and Corey Wise. Mm-hmm. That is, and we're not calling them what they want to call them. Those are the ones they saw and accused of some bullshit. But you know, they had a name for them at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, well, now they are the exonerated the five. Exonerated We're gonna five. Call them the How exonerated five. We're going to the exonerated five. Clap it up for the exonerated five. No longer that other name. That's right. Um, I mean, this story was just crazy. Now, I was about, um, I think I was the same age as those guys when I was a teenager. And I remember when it happened, like, I, you, you heard it from the news perspective. Like, there wasn't all the social media and everything. So all I got to hear was everything the news had to say, which basically painted them as guilty. So being a, you know, being a young black uh, female in an urban environment and just kind of knowing how the cops roll and stuff, I, at the time, I couldn't really say for sure if I thought they were, you know, if I thought they were innocent or not, because I didn't realize, like, you know, the the in depth of, of right. what they went through. But at the time, I just remember being like, you know, a young head growing up in the hood, like, I ah, probably fucked that bitch up. Well, you the know, big story, really. the big part about it that made it almost kind of close to home in hip hop was. The term they used, wilding. Wilding. In, mm-hmm. no, they, they said in the they news, said they said wilding. And, and, you know, us as black people is like, look at these white people fucking yeah, it up again. Fuck, like, fucking like, up the word They wilding. don't even know how right. it's wilding. Yeah, yeah but, but, wilding. but right. they're saying wilding, but they don't mm-hmm. understand that it's really wilding. Right. You know, and so somebody probably said they was out there wilding, and now they're calling it wilding. Mm-hmm. But by calling it wilding, it gave it an animalistic yeah. tone to it. You see, because what they were, do you find in the, the wild? Pack. You find animals in the wild. And that's one of the main things they were calling these young men mm-hmm. all during the investigation were animals. Um, you know what's interesting too? Because I, um, like since this documentary surfaced, like I kind of went back in Well, this time. is not a documentary. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a four part doc it's series. A, it's a, it's a it's drama. A, it's, a, it's, it's a, a mini series drama. Mini series drama. Yeah. Since this, uh, since this aired, mm-hmm. like I actually went back and just kind of googled some of the, you know, stories that were published back then. Not one publication used the word alleged. Mm. That's something that I and like I just that was something like I just noticed on my own when I, you know, I'm like, you know what, let me see, because now I wanted to see the actual confession tape from Nady, you know, and stuff, and, and I'm like, damn, all of them just said, you know, gang rape, teen, teens rape jogger, like, none of these publications use the word alleged. Just, just something interesting I noticed. That is crazy. Um, well, before we go further, shout out to my nephew, Ahmad, okay, who was an extra in the scene in the park when they was wilding. Hey. Um, yeah. Uh, and also, shit, shout out to me and Dead Prez. I'm listening to all of a sudden a Dead Prez song comes on, Happiness, and that's a joint that I produced. Hey! hey. So I'm part of this motherfucking thing. Let's I got go. skin in the game. <laughs> Let's go residuals. Okay. <laughs> um, so real quick, I want to talk about casting, which mm-hmm. is something that people don't really talk about a lot in movies, but it's so very important. I don't even know who the casting director was on this, but they did an 
Excellent job. Okay, Felicity Huffman, the lady that plays, what's her name? Linda Fairstein. Linda Fairstein. Yo, like, I hated her from the minute I seen her on screen. And you're supposed to. You understand? Like, her character, you were supposed to hate her because she was a fucking bitch. Like, she was that fucking, you know that fucking white teacher at school that just, like, you know, just has it out for you and shit mm -hmm. like that. And she don't really like black people. And it's like, well, why are you teaching at this fucking school, bitch? You know? And it's like, you know this black kid's that fucking, you know, but she's mad because... You know, she couldn't work at the all-white school. She had to take this job. So now she's going to fucking, you know what I mean? She got it in for the black kids. I used to go to schools like that. Maybe you might have went to someone too. Um, but she just reminded me of one of those type of mm -hmm. crotchety, Well, I, you know, I went to boarding school, so I was, <laughs> I was yo, surrounded by him. Just have it out for a young black man type white woman. Um... And she played the shit out of that fucking role. Yo, yo, sidebar. How ironic is it that right before she plays the hell out of this villainous role, she's plastered all in the news as a for villain. scamming the college. As <laughs> a villain. But she's actually about, she pleaded guilty. She's actually about to serve time for right. it, too. Like, how crazy is it that that's happening to her in real life? We're seeing her already in the news for that. And then, now, would she want a prosecutor to it, go as hard as and do the type of shit that was done, that her character did? You understand mm, what I'm saying? Like, like, mm. oh, man. But, yeah, that role right there, I'm telling you, that shit was, she was great. She played, played the hell role. out of her. She role. played the hell out because I hated her. I really hated her. And that's, that's what you, like, she transformed into that woman. Um, and it was interesting because, you know, there's always two sides to every story, right? So, and I know Ava is focusing on the, you know, the, the exonerated five side. I was just curious, and, and I did see her, you know, I did read where she said she, in all fairness, she did reach out to Linda Fairstein to tell her part. And how about she, she would have done it but she didn't want to do it if they were also going to tell their side. So, wow. So basically, 20 years later... She still want to keep it one-sided. St yeah, like, you, you still don't want them to speak their piece. But I was, I would have loved, you know, I would have loved to see what she had to say, like, what her rationale behind all this was. Like, okay, beyond being racist, beyond, like, whatever it is going on with you, like... Like, why is it so, like, why is it so, like, embedded in your core that these guys did it? Like, what is it that, you know, that's driving you to, to just ignore evidence, ignore logic, just like everything and, and pin it on your Because it's voice. part of your pre, her predisposition of what black people and especially black young men are. You see, in her mind, it's quite easy for them to go from, you know, m you know, basically maybe menacing little white people in the park to now brutally raping a white woman. Like, that's what, in her mind, black men do. Like, that's the, that's the subconscious fear that's always been ingrained, like, you know, in these white women since the days of slavery. One of these motherfuckers might get loose and rape one of these white women. We gotta mm. protect our white women. This is how shit, the Klan and all this shit was first, you know, mm -hmm. originated off of bullshit like that. Um, now all of these, these other attacks that happened in the park that night, are, are there any like stories or charges? Like have any of these guys ever, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was watching. you know, press charges, identified any of them as their attackers? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, people were attacking dude on the bike, they got charged with that assault. Okay. They were charged with uh, the bike assault. Okay. Um, other than the, is it any of the five? Oh, oh, and the five now. They, 
it, so but some other people got charged. So the, okay, so other people were charged. Like so, um, but basically, my question was: the other people in the park that got attacked, have any of them come out and say, "Hey, matter of fact, that looks like the guy that hit me." Because or? if I'm gonna keep it real, you know, I feel like most teenagers at some point have done something similar to what they did in that park one day. Like a pack of motherfuckers just, a pack of us just running wild, kind of like, but not to the point where we'd ever lead to a fucking rape or anything like that, but you know. I'm like, don't use the word pack, I'm, I'm, I'm traumatized by that word pack. Squad, a group, y'all was mobbing. A crew. Y'all was mobbing. Mobbing. Okay, a okay. A crew, yeah, we, we call it more crew. We wouldn't even call it a pack. We call it. Right. That was what it was, so and on the way, you might have just been looking for your bench. They was having fun as kids. Not saying everyone was an agent. Right, right. Got, but that's where all the kids from Harlem, from Spanish Harlem, from the East Side, all the way That's where they went to hang out. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. If you're a teenager, you went to hang out. You went to a fucking park. And on your way there. You, boys will be boys, as they say. Yeah. But but that only applies for white kids. You see, boys will be boys. Right. Like if that was a group of white kids coming through the park wilding and you know yeah. messing with people on bikes and spinning them around, you know, it would ah oh, leave them alone. They just boys will be boys. You know. But as black people now, that it goes from that to the point where it could lead to a rape. Um, real quick, I want to talk about some of the outstanding acting before we move on. Um. The young man that played Kevin Richardson, the one that played the young one, mm -hmm. I felt like he was really a standout. But I guess the, oh, and all of the actors were great, but the, the ultimate standout has to be the one that played Corey Wise. Oh, For yeah. the simple fact, he was the only one that they used as the young self and the older self. How the fuck? Did this man play a 16-year-old kid and look believable and then play a 30-year-old motherfucking man and look just as believable? I and mean, how old is this man I mean, in real life? I mean, he's already in Oscar-winning movies. So. He's in his 20s in real yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he already, he's already a, a certified thespian, so. Is, I don't, what, what else was he in? Moonlighting. Moonlighting, what, mm -hmm. what, is, what is that? With, with Mahershala. Uh, um, oh, see, I never saw that. I'm saying moonlighting, I mean moonlight, right? right? Is it moonlight or moonlighting? Oh, yeah. see, I yeah. never saw yeah, that. Yeah, no, he's already. I look, wouldn't have seen he, that though, because that's got, about the little gay kid, right? Like, he already got a high school on the table. Yeah, this is why I don't know who he is. But he's already, yeah. He, well, he, I'm going to tell you, man. Certified. That motherfucker did an excellent job. And I was, cause I was like, all right, everybody I want to see. I saw what their, you know, their older version. And when it got yeah. to him, I was like, all right, who, who's going to play this guy? And when I saw it was the same actor, I was like, and he even, Whoa. he even got uh, Corey's mannerisms down to a science, like how, how the actor portrayed him in the, you know, in the confession part and in, in the show, uh, Compared to like the real live living Corey Wise, I'm like, wow, you, he did that. But he, now, he nailed that. But now, I, I gotta say, that being said, there was one part that was a little creepy to me because the girl that played his girlfriend, she looked at legit 15. You know what I'm saying? I would be curious to know how old she was. But she looked legit 15, and he had a scene where he had to kiss her. You know what I mean? So was this grown man kissing this little girl? You see, I know he was playing a 16-year-old, but in real life, this is a grown-ass man kissing a little girl. I'm just saying. Like, but she looks at I mean, but you don't know how old she is I'm in real one, life. That's, I'm just wondering. I, I'm, and I'm, I'm just saying that's a little creepy to me. Because the shit you do when you're acting is, is, is really happening. Like, you can act like I, we're in an imaginary world, and that's why people think they can get away with doing certain shit. But in the end of the day, 
You but you're, you're you're assuming she's 15 because she looks 15. I don't know. That's I, I, I'm I'm gonna. I'm assuming because she played a 15 year old. But again, he played a 16 year old. He's obviously not 16. But she, I'm just saying, she mm. looked legit. I got you. Young. So well, I'm just I'm, wondering. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that Queen Ava dotted her eyes and crossed her teeth and when, find a old when it, a twenty something year old girl it, that looked like she's 14. you know, in regards to those legalities, because. That's she, she did, you know. Yeah, but but. I, I mean, and it wasn't a tongue kiss, so I, I mean, I'm just saying, like, you know, this, this, there be, uh, it was a little weird to me. That's all. That's all. I got you. I'm just, just, just that's be, what I just, felt when I saw it. Just because you saw him as a grown up after the fact. That's that's right. When I why. realized, like, like it didn't it didn't bother me watching those two as teenagers. Well, well, no. Well, here's the thing. He was flashbacking while he was in his cell. So now he's mm-hmm. a grown up. Right. He's already older now, mm-hmm. but he's flashing back to when he was younger because mm-hmm. that was his only girlfriend, really, I guess. And so and so actually, what happened in the cell. We never saw that happen in real life. He didn't no, really no. actually get a chance to kiss her until that moment no, I'm just, in his mind. I'm saying you and your. So again, I'm, I'm huh? saying you and your brain right now because you saw him as a grown up. She's 16 that's in real life, and he's 21. Mm-hmm. I mean, back in the days, we, you know, I'm gonna keep it real. We we got, we got married couples, you mm-hmm. know, like when niggas was 21 and the wife was 16, 17, you know down south some fucking way like that's how they used to rock so all right i guess yeah i just you know a little weird but all in all it was great and it speaks to the fact that yo parents never let your fucking children get questioned without you in their presence right don't be fucking signing papers that you know what I mean just because you think a motherfucker you want to get a motherfucker out of some trouble right at that moment oh, I want to get him home right now let me uh, sign it I want to go home like like nah nah if I sign this you're gonna be fucked even worse you're gonna have to tough this out for the night bro I'm gonna be back tomorrow with the lawyers and all that type of shit that's right but I ain't signing shit that's right and and everybody I don't care if you a little kid or not grown-ass people Shut your motherfucking mouth. Don't say nothing. Don't try to explain yourself. Guess why? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you, not for you. They never say it can and will be used for you. It can and will be used against you so knowing that don't say a word don't say a word you've seen the first 48 they hate the motherfuckers that don't talk they hate them Mm -hmm. be that motherfucker shut your motherfucking mouth kids parents don't say nothing you're not gonna explain, he's not the, they not the judge. The police not the judge. They can't get you out of nothing. Don't say nothing to them. Only to your lawyer. And make sure he's a fucking, he actually is your lawyer. Cause they might send some nigga in there pretending to be your lawyer. I don't fucking know. I don't mm-hmm. trust these bastards. Make sure your family <laughs> all check over them again. out. <laughs> nah, it's real talk though. Um, I think because it's, that's the biggest lesson of this whole thing, really. I think it's interesting right now in 2019, Linda Fairstein is still, she still maintains that they are guilty. You know, she's received a ton of backlash since this happened. She's been dropped from every board she's been serving on. Good. Fuck um, out of here. They're starting a, they're actually, there's a call to action to yank all of her books off the shelf. And she's, you know, she's like, now she's like a, a renowned, like, crime novelist. So they're, um, they're yanking her books off the shelves. Her pub- I know she was dropped by her publisher. 
And um, I think I think there needs to be a criminal action taken against her. And I also think every case she's ever uh, presided over needs to be uh, hmm. needs to be called into question. Speaking of, I think people need to get criminal action put on them. When we come back, I want to talk about this little motherfucker, little Zan, pulling out guns on motherfuckers. Oh, oh yeah, little fucker, I oh, seen yeah. you. You ain't getting away with it. You know what I mean, God can't. <laughs>